let us welcome this young man, Sean Studs, out of Manchester Mandeville. Going to be a nice young man, an intelligent young man, a young man that worked really hard to reach his goal and try to get on top. Interview from CVR, Justice of the Peace. On this evening's panel discussion, we examine the relevance and role Give of Justices love. of the Peace. Following regions controversy surrounding a leaked video of the individual accused of the gruesome Clarendon Contrapple murder, joining us in studio are attorney at law, Anthony Williams, and Justice of the Peace in St. Andrew, Sean Stoltz. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, good and evening. thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start. On this evening's panel discussion, we examine the relevance and role of Justices of the Peace. Following regions controversy surrounding a leaked video of the individual accused of the gruesome Clarendon Contrapple murder, joining us in studio are attorney at law, Anthony Williams, and Justice of the Peace in St. Andrew, Sean Stoltz. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, good evening. and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start, first question, how relevant are Justice of the Peace in today's Jamaica? And I'll start with you, please. Well, a lot of persons are of the view that the only role that a Justice of the Peace perform is merely signing documents, passports and affidavits and other uh, documents that are required for the court or for immigration purposes, et cetera, et cetera. But that is not the sole and primary function of a Justice of the Peace. The Justice of the Peace um, for the respective parishes and recently legislation has been passed for all J JPs to be known as JPs for the island of Jamaica and not so much a particular parish. But they are, all, they are also required to um, go to the police stations to assist persons who are suspect in relation to alleged offenses committed by them. So they would oversee the taking of a caution statement, for example, uh, a question and answer. There are times when the Justice of the Peace will visit the, the, the lockups, or we'll call it on the remand, to ensure that the, their rights are protected and to ensure that the conditions in the prisons are also um, in good order. You know, food, uh, they're not you know, physically assaulted, etc., etc., in the prisons. We also have the uh, the Justice of the Peace who sit as lay magistrates in the court to hear uh, petty session offences. So they have a, a, um, an important role to play in the society, right? So it's not just the signing of, of, of documents. They can um, also grant bail in certain circumstances. They can um, sign warrants, you know, witness warrants, lots of things that the JP uh, can do. Well, Mr. Stoltz, there are some who contend that Justice JPs have outlived their purpose and their usefulness in a modern Jamaican society. How do you respond to that? All right, I, I would say that uh, Justice of the Peace, they're very relevant in our society. So apart from signing off documents and witnessing off documents, they have a role to play in their communities because the real um, purpose of a JP is to be a community leader Right, one that somebody looks up to, one that helps to bring about peace within the community, helps to resolve conflict, right? So as opposed to only signing off documents, right, these are integral roles of a justice of the peace within the community, and of such I see their role as very necessary and relevant uh, to the administration of justice in Jamaica. Well, I'm curious, so given our current levels of crime and murder, would you say that without the JPs, it would be worse or that they are not fulfilling that role? All right, I would not say it would be worse. Uh, what I would say, JPs do play a role uh, in the process, right, wherein they are supposed to be persons who help to resolve conflict within their communities, right? So I am not in a position to say if it would be worse as much as I would say is the fact that they have a duty to ensure that they assist um, with these processes um, in helping to minimize the occurrence of crime and violence in Jamaica. Yes, as well as the, the fact that there are several persons who are, are impecunious, and by that I mean they are not financially well off. 
And so they may not be able to afford the services of a lawyer. And uh, it is the responsibility of a police officer, once they have a suspect in their custody, to uh, take steps to ensure that that suspect is given his legal rights. And so where they cannot afford an attorney, then the Justice of the Peace also fulfill that role. They can be called and they can bear witnesses um, for identification parades, as I said, caution statements, for question and answers, and they fulfill that role. As my esteemed colleague um, mentioned, that they are essentially community persons. So they, 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 they are seen and should be regarded and classified as community leaders. And once someone is appointed a justice of the peace, that person is in essence someone who is regarded as possessing high standards, high uh, portraits of integrity, honesty, decency, and of moral values. So they play a very uh, important role. Appreciate it. We do have to take a break. Yeah. Our panel discussion will continue right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still examining the relevancy and role of Justice of the Peace. Still with us, Attorney at Law, Anthony Williams, and Justice of the Peace, and St. Andrew Sean Stoltz. Now, uh, before we went to break, Mr. Williams, you, you brought the issue of high standards. And yes. obviously part of the reason why we're all sitting here tonight is because of the issue of that video that went viral. Now, um, the Lay Magistrates Association of Jamaica put out a statement and they asserted that the actions of the four JPs are, uh, quote, in contradiction of the tenets of the role of a JP and were not in accordance with the modus operandi in the execution of such duties, unquote. Uh, Mr. Sosa, how do you respond to that? All right, I... It, it, the, first, I must say that the release of the video is very unfortunate, it's a very unfortunate situation. However, one has to understand that uh, based on the Justice of the Peace Jurisdiction Act, there are different roles and responsibility. And I figure more than likely the JPs were um, conducting their um, rightful roles and responsibility, right, in <coughs> terms of protecting, right, the rights it does not matter the extent of the charge laid against an individual, right? The Justice of the Peace has a right to ensure that once they are behind bar in custody, their rights are, are, are protected and they are treated in a, a humane way. Now, uh, the release of that video, I, I am certain it was not for public consumption. However, it's very unfortunate, right? So the fact that the Ministry of Justice uh, by virtue of the, the Costas is currently investigating the matter. I think I would reserve um, any other comment on that matter. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mr. Williams. Well, for if, if I have a question concerning that. What are the rules concerning uh, taping of an individual in custody? Uh, uh, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I was under the impression that if you are under remand in court or if you are in the jail, you, that is not allowed. I believe, it, is it an illegal act? Well, first of all, I respectfully beg to disagree with my friend. Um, he did say that um, he believed that the JPs were there to protect Mr. Barnett. I, 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 disag I disagree. I disagree, and I'll come to the question, because it was made clear in, in the video that he was asked whether or not he was beaten by the police or injured in any way, and he made it clear that in the video that he was not beaten. The allegation is that he was threatened. Now, if he was threatened as he asserted, then as far as I'm concerned, the JPs should have conducted their line of questioning along those, those lines, in the sense that here's an allegation of threat. So the question should be, who threatened you? Where was this threat issued? When was this threat issued? How was this threat issued? What was the nature of the threat? Now, for them to proceed to then demand of Mr. Barnett to strip himself, 
and then purport to have a medical examination, I think was a usurpation of their, their powers. Because, remember, the gentleman has said, I was threatened. How can that collate or correlate with a threat? But going back to the videotaping, I am not aware of any legislation or any law or any authority that would give those JPs or any JPs whatsoever the right to videotape. We have to also understand, and I want to make this very, very pellucid to the public, that when a suspect is charged or to be charged, and he, especially if he's b b before the court, once you're in police custody, I want all the police officers to remember that a suspect has rights. And those rights have to be um, um, respected. They have constitutional rights. And so we, we saw in the video where the gentleman was, was demanded to, to, to strip himself, you know, take off his clothes. So his right of privacy, right of dignity, all of that was, you know, as far as I'm concerned, in over breach. So I don't know of any law that give any JP the, the right to videotape. And as a matter of fact, Section 3 of the Justice of the Peace legislation makes it clear, 3E, it says, and I'm going to read it, it says that one of the duties of the, 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 the Justice of the Peace in, in terms of exercising their, their duties is to safeguard the confidentiality of information that comes to that justice by virtue of his or her function as a justice and shall not disclose that information except as permitted by law. Well, it is said that um, the video went to the wrong um, person or the wrong telephone number. Well, you know, whether it went to the wrong or right person, I am not aware of any such legislation that gives anyone the right, well, the, the JPs, to do that video taping. So, uh, <coughs> Mr. Stoltz, if I may, the issue, you have four JPs. Correct. One of whom is a medical doctor. Now, considering the fact that one JP has already admitted to the fact of taking the video and said that it went to the wrong number, how, when it comes to standards, ignoring the fact that you have four JPs, the fact is one of them is also a doctor. Who, so he's violating confidentiality not only as a JP, but as a medical profession. Yes. From your standpoint, Mr. Stolson, you've written a very uh, supportive letter in, in support of these uh, JPs and their actions. I'm curious, how do you intend to support that given these facts? All right, first I must clarify what my learned friend said. Uh, the accused was not demanded. He was asked and he gave um, his response by saying yes he would allow for them to remove um, mm. his clothing, right? He, he, he did. Well, in custody in front of four <laughs> JPs. Right. It doesn't really sound like a request. Mm. Right? It, it was. By and also, his video. attorney was oh. out there. He, he, yeah. he, was, he was told to take off his clothes. And also, there is really nothing in the act. Um, he did mention that there is no legislation that state that videotaping is allowed. And also, there is none that state is not allowed. But confidentiality yeah. is an issue. Right? So, as I said, the only setback would be for me, is the release of the video. Well, what the about the fact space. that it was taken in the first place? And what about the issue of confidentiality? The fact that you have a JP who's also a medical doctor who's performing a medical examination in front of others without expressly asking for a release. Well, I mean, but, but I'm sorry, I'm not, also, please continue also, with your defense. Uh, we continue to see medical um, examination. No, what really happened? What's the, the, the no, no, that was Dr. Cook. Dr. Cook, JP Dr. Cook said, that I'm conducting a medical examination. It's in the video, sir. Right. Well, as I'm, as I'm saying, in terms of, of what transpired um, in the video, it must be also known that it is the, the common practice of JPs to do this form of assessment in terms of uh, ensuring that the rights of the accused is not breached in any way. Now, what they were simply trying to do is to ascertain whether or not the person's rights have been breached. 
in terms of whether or not they were abused um, behind bars. So uh, I would not say, right, uh, they did something wrong, right, because there is really nothing in the statute with, that with, prohibits. With all due respect, sir, uh, Mr. Williams has made the, the point that the issue of confidentiality has already been breached. The fact of the matter is the video was taken. And not only that, you know, the, 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 the suspect, Mr. Barnett, uh, as far as I'm aware, had a lawyer. He had a lawyer. So, so why was his lawyer not communicated um, to? Why, were, why did they not communicate that, you know, to his attorney? You see, what JPs have to understand is that once you go, you go to the police station and you have to ascertain from the suspect, do you have an attorney? No. Can you afford an attorney? No. And once those are, are, are met, and especially if it is difficult for the police to obtain the assistance of the, from the legal aid counsel, um, re a duty counsel, then the role of the JP becomes very critical. But we're talking about a situation where Mr. Barnett was already before the court, based on my information. He had an attorney or has an attorney at the material time. So question was why these four were there? Why, why were they there? Actually, and, I would like Mr. Yeah, we'll so much time, Mr. Know, Mr. Stokes, why were they there? Can you help us understand why they were there and why it is that he said I was threatened, but they never asked him that. Of course they But they went straight to the beating. Again, I would emphasize that this matter is currently being investigated. And as such, I will, I, I will actually not speak much on the details, as much as I would say, based on the legislation, is that the JPs have a duty to ensure that the rights of the accused behind bars, they are protected and they did carry out their rightful duty, which is to ensure that it was not breached in any way. I'm not that sure. The unfortunate situation is that the video was released, and that is being handled by virtue of an investigation, which I'm not. Um, okay, so we, we, we have a minute on. left. Yes. But, uh, yeah. His attorney, Ms. Harris, yes. has said she's, she will pursue yes. uh, within the court's uh, outcomes on these individuals. What outcome? will this have possibly on not just the case that he's currently being charged with, the murders, but the other alleged sexual uh, assault case? Well, the, the, the most I would say, like my friend, is that the matters before the court, you know, we call it in law sub judicae, so don't wish to really comment on that. But I think it is very important for the short time that we have left um, to remind JPs what are, what are some of the code of conduct, and it is set out in the 2018 Act. And it says in um, the second schedule that... Barely 10 seconds. Go. Yes. Uh, that JPs are to act um, um, professionally. They must act fairly. They must act um, with unbiasedness. They must act with impartiality. And they must scrupulously preserve his or her independence. And scrupulously mean to be fastidious, meticulous, very thorough. And so if you're going to protect somebody's rights, you must ensure that there are no perceived or real conflict of in, um, interest, etc., etc. And so when you go there, you must ensure that you are impartial and to protect the rights of the suspect in prison. Gentlemen, uh, Mr. Anthony Williams and Mr. Stoltz, thank you both very much for your time. No problem. And uh, <coughs> your ability to help us navigate the situation. Thank you. This is my people. Remember to like and share. I know that more can come out for young people. Thank you.